Hello YouTube, today I'm going to answer a question I received a few times since I released that video over there. And that question is how to access the query parameters when we are using incremental static regeneration. And the honest answer is that Next.js doesn't allow you to access the query parameters inside get static props. But in this video, I will show you an alternative solution where we will be able to have all the benefits and probably a few more from incremental static regeneration plus accessing our query parameters. So what do we mean by query parameters? Query parameters is everything that we have after that question mark and applications like Amazon in their product page where we are doing our filters use that quite a lot. So how can we deploy something like this in order to use my solution? If you are just deploying your Next.js server like that and your users access it directly, my solution will not work because I will require a CDN. The CDN is where we will do all the magic tricks in order to have the cache. So if you are using already Vercel or Netlify, this is done completely out of the box for you. You don't need to do anything. If you are using any other cloud provider, you just need to activate or enable the CDN for your deployments, okay? Now that we said that, let's just do a small introduction to incremental static regeneration. I will just kind of repeat what I said in that video. So if you already watched that video, feel free to go ahead to the next chapter where I'm going to give you the solution for this problem. Now, for the ones of you that want to see the timeline, let's first start by a normal parameter. So this ID will be a parameter, and then we will go to the filters in order for us to play with the query parameters. So usually, a Next.js with get static props and get static pods is something similar to this. The only change I'm going to do in that fallback is that I will change the fallback from true to fallback blocking. Then you can have just a normal query to your database. As you can see here, we are using the normal parameters, not the query parameters. And then we are just returning those properties. You can see that revalidate 20 is asking Next.js to keep that data as fresh for the next 20 seconds. If a user goes there after 20 seconds, then Next.js needs to revalidate the page, but still sends old data to that user. So let's just see a few bullet points, and then we will see a diagram explaining this better. So Next.js, in that specific example, will attempt to regenerate that page at most one time for every 20 seconds. Even if 1,000 users go to that page, Next.js regenerated that page one time, and then for all the other users, they just receive something that Next.js saved into disk. Okay, then if no users eat that page for the next three hours, Next.js will not regenerate that page during those three hours, even though we said that the regeneration is only valid for the next 20 seconds, right? But if no user eats that page, then that page will not be regenerated. Now, the first user that eats that page after those three hours will get a page that is three hours old in terms of data. Behind the scenes, Next.js will start a new regeneration process, and when it's finished, it will save it to disk. And this is what is normally called stale while revalidate. You should probably uh, memorize that word, stale while revalidate, because we will use it in a few minutes' time, okay? Now, let's see the diagram of a real timeline for the incremental static regeneration. Let's say that at zero seconds, that happened a generation of a component, right? Anyone that will request a page between 0 and 20 seconds will just receive whatever is in cache and it doesn't trigger any new build for Next.js. Anyone that requests a page, let's say after 50 seconds, that user will get data that is 50 seconds old. Next.js, behind the scenes, will start a generation, and let's say each generation takes 500 milliseconds or something like that, depending on your database query speed, right? And after those 500 milliseconds, let's say five seconds after that, another user comes, that user will get data that was generated in this moment over here, okay? So we can now isolate that generation and that user and put that at the beginning of our chart. So now our, our chart is again at zero seconds. So everything from now on, it will be just a repeat of that. Every time that Next.js does a regeneration, it's like we start the chart again from zero and the time will start to count. 
So now that we have a good understanding of the timeline from incremental static regeneration, I think you are ready to start to look into the filter part, right? And as I said, the filters will we will care about everything after that question mark. So if you go and you try to do something like this, context.query, as you can see, my VS code over there is already complaining because, well, query, as I said in the beginning of the video, is not available inside our get static props. So what can we do? Well, an easy solution for us is to go to our get static props and replace get static props by get server side props. And if we do that, the next thing we need to remove is that revalidate 20 because get server side props on every request will just generate the page. So at this stage, we lost all the benefits from caching, right? Every request, if we have a thousand requests in that second, Next.js will generate that page a thousand times. So you might be saying, this is very bad, right, Bruno? Yes, it is. That's now when we are going to use the CDN. So let me give a bit of space at the beginning of this file. And now that we have space at the beginning of this file, let's play with the headers for our CDN. So then the first thing we need to do is to say context, which is this thing over here in our get static prop, uh, get server side props. And now that we have that context, we can do dot response dot set header. And the other that we care about will be the cache control. So the first header that we will use will be an X max age. And this X max age, like the revalidate on Next.js, is telling our CDN that this data is fresh for the next 20 seconds. All right. If we want to then have all the benefits from Next.js, like the stale while revalidate, we can also pass that header over there. And now we have those two headers. We have the X max age to 20 and we have the stale while revalidate. So after the 20 seconds, if a user hits that page, that user will receive that page as is and Next.js behind the scenes will start a revalidation. Now let's say that we go ahead and we will just do this timeline as if we only have the S max age and then we will have another timeline as if we have X max age and style while revalidate. So you can see the differences between the two. If we get the page between zero seconds and 20 seconds, as you can see, I will get that page immediately. So exactly the same as before when we were using incremental static regeneration from Next.js. Then if a user gets a page at let's say 60 seconds, because we don't have stale while revalidate, that user will do the request and we'll have to wait for the generation. I called regeneration here, but it should be just generation, right? It will wait for that page to be generated and then that user will receive that page. So let's say that between here and here, it took one second, our user will see one second, our browser completely blank. Nothing is there in our browser. So we can now go ahead and add that style while revalidate. If we add that style while revalidate between the first 20 seconds is exactly the same thing. But then if we go after those 20 seconds, let's say after 50 seconds, our user immediately receives stale data. So we receive all data that was generated at zero seconds. And then our next JS will start a new regeneration. Okay. So at this moment, we can get the best of both worlds, we will be able to get our query, still get the style while revalidate. So we are in a very good place. We can go even a step further with this. Let's say that we add that style while revalidate equals to 60. So you might be now asking, what is that, Bruno? Let's go again to the timeline. So for the first 20 seconds, the same thing as before, no changes whatsoever. Now, if a user requests something between 20 seconds and 80 seconds, which is whatever value we have in max age plus that value from the stale while revalidate, the user receives stale data immediately. So between 20 and 80 is the same behavior as before. Next.js will start now a new regeneration. And when it's over, we save that into our CDN. Now, the important part starts at 80 seconds, which is 20 plus 60. And then after this moment, we will have blocking once again. So if a user requests data over there, 
that user no longer receives stale data. So the data that this user will receive will be fresh data. This might be very important if you have an application like a weather app, for example. You want your users to get as fast as possible, but let's say that after three hours, if nobody requested that page, and the next user that requests that page, you don't want to send data about the weather that is more than, probably even less than three hours, but let's say three hours. You don't want to send data that is already three hours old. You prefer that that user will have a small penalty for you to go to the database and return fresh data than to send stale data. And so, with this, you can have the best of both worlds. And this is the bit that I'm, I was saying at the beginning of the video that is even better in a way than the normal incremental static regeneration in Next.js because you can now go here and say 60 seconds or you can say one hour, 3,600 3, seconds, right? And for a weather app, I will say something around that time is very good because if a user doesn't go there for more than two, three hours, that data no longer makes sense. So it's better that that user pays a penalty. Now, let's talk about something that you should be aware of when using this solution, which are the possible problems. And let's start by the simple problems to the hardest problems that you might encounter with this solution. So the first problem is that you have to purge your CDN on every single request. What I mean by purge? you need to go to your CDN provider and ask for that CDN provider to delete everything from your CDN cache after you do a deployment. Otherwise, you might do a deployment right now, but if you have something in cache that you said to be stale while revalidate for the next 20 hours, you might be getting that data, which is not what you want, right? The good news for you, if you are using Vercel or Netlify, once again, they take care of it for you automatically, you don't need to care about it. You do a deployment, Vercel and Netlify clear the CDN for you. So if you are using one of those two, you don't need to worry. If you are using any other CDN provider, take this one into consideration because for some applications, this might be a deal breaker. Let's now go into the second page of possible problems. And as we already saw in this video, get static props runs in kind of a safety sandbox. I like to call it that way because it's almost impossible for us to screw up something. And why I mean by this? Well, in get server side props, you have access to the full runtime. And because we have access to the full runtime, we have access to good stuff like the query parameters. But then we might shoot ourselves in the foot because we have access to all the request headers, for example, which means we will have access to the authenticated user. So if we are doing any rendering based on the authenticated user, this might be very, very scary now because we are then making that page public. So be very careful in this type of scenarios because you have access to the authentication, to the cookies and everything that is available at runtime. So let me just give you this third list of problems, which is all based on the authenticated user. So let's say you might have your username in some kind of header. Now, all the other users that will receive that page will have that same user. Let's say the first user was me, Bruno. So all the next users that will go to receive that page in the next 20 seconds or until there is a new regeneration, all those users will receive another saying, Bruno, this is very bad, right? But it can get even worse for you <laughs> and your company. Let's say that you have a list of products that is based on the user that is seeing this list of products. For example, let's say that you have vouchers or promotions that you have already applied to the price of that product. So because I'm Bruno, I have some promotions, then you save it into the CDN, the next user will see my promotions, right? So this is no longer only a GDPR problem in terms of data protection. It's also a problem in terms of profits to your business, or in this case, loss of money for your business, right? Then you can go to other even probably more dangerous problems, like distinctions by the age of the user. If I go to Amazon and if I'm not 18 years old, I can't order alcohol here in the UK. But what if I go to that page, you put that page into the CDN and then a young person like 14, 15 years old goes to that page and is able to order alcohol because, well, that page was there in the CDN. So you need to take a lot of care about those type of scenarios, right? 
So you might even have private data into those lists, like my phone number might be on the top of a list for whatever reason, right? So this is something that gives us a lot of power, but as a saying that I really love to say is, with great power comes great responsibility. This is a saying from Peter Parker, Spider-Man, and I use this on a daily basis almost. Is I'm giving you a lot of power, but it's now a lot of responsibility that you also have when you are applying this in your company. If you are just changing something from get static props into get server side props and adding the, those headers, then you are absolutely fine. I don't think you have problems, but if you already have a page that is done in get server side props and you just add those headers, it might bring some problems to you. So be careful when you are doing these new headers into pages because the problems are real and they can really exist, okay? Now that I said all of this, I will, I will just say that I left an example into the description of this video, so you can go to that example and try by yourself that timeline. Just make sure that you change the query parameters because otherwise, if there are 20 people going to the same query parameters as you, they will destroy the test that you are doing. So change the query parameters to something that makes sense to you because as you can see over here in this example, I'm just putting the query parameters. So you can come over here and say even uh, Portugal equals to hello. And now after two and a half seconds, because that's the delay I put in my fake SQL query, you will see that I have the new property over here saying Portugal equals to hello. So now I refresh this page and as you can see, this is very, very fast to receive that page. The code is just this code over here, there is nothing special in terms of the code. It's just that header that I showed to you. And then I'm just having this fake timeout just to simulate a very, very slow uh, API call or a very, very slow SQL query, okay? So if you have any question or any suggestion how you can avoid some of those problems I showed to you, let me know in the comments like the video because that's very important for all the algorithms in those things. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.